Yep, that's it now. Cool, there we go. All right, uh, let's get started. Uh, good day, guys. It's, uh, my great it's my great pleasure to be hosting this uh, this session, and this will be the last IEC uh, networking session for GM 2020. And uh, today, with me, we have a fantastic panel, and we will be, and we will be talking about one of the most exciting topics from my perspective. That is about the future of IEC, the young professionals. I'll, get, I, I, I'll give you some quick introduction about uh, myself. So my name is Bao Ying Tong. I'm an electrical engineer with ACOM and also an, a, I'm also a project manager with Engineers Australia. I was representing Australia in the last year's Young Professional Program in Shanghai. And uh, my personal interest is in smart cities space. I'm, on, I'm a member of the Smart Cities uh, Systems Committee Working Group 2. So today with me, uh, we have uh, some really, uh, we have some really experienced leaders from IEC world, including Claire, Michael, and uh, Jacob. And the, the key theme today is about the young professionals. And really, I see this as the, the chance to talk about the future. So under today's key theme, I actually have three topics to talk about with our panelists. The first one is about how we can support young professionals to get involved. And the second topic is about for national committees, how can we how, how can we help young professionals stay engaged and continuously contribute to the work field? And lastly, we want to we want young professionals to become a leader of the future and make a difference. So how can we support them on that? So before I get started, I'll give you a bit of background on what is young professional program for IEC and hence trying to set. I, I hope that would provide context for today for today's discussion. So the IEC Young Professional Program is one of the most pro pro prestigious programs in, for, in, in IEC that, that's organized for young professionals since 20, 2010. Last year, we had, we had 41 young professionals from, we, we had 88 young professionals from 41 countries attended the workshop in Shanghai. And really during the three days, young professionals, young professionals actually had, had the opportunity to, net, to network with technical experts from different countries and also different technology field and also get, get exposure to the, uh, to, the, to the IEC world regarding the procedures and also the process. So I realize time is very really short and we will have a lot of questions to go through. So let's start uh, with the first question. Uh, this question I have prepared that to kick off all those discussions and hopefully that will warm up everyone on the panel. Um, the question is, when I mentioned young professionals, what words come to your mind. And before you jump into this question straight away, I also encourage you to say a few words about yourself, about what's your name, where, where, where you're at, what's your job, and also your involvement with IEC so far. I'll start uh, with uh, you first, Claire. Thank you very much, and, and thank you to Bao Ying and to the IEC for putting on this event. Um, as by way of introduction, my name is Claire Hoburn, and I am an International Engagement Manager at Standards Australia. Um, so we're the National Standards Body in Australia, um, and, and kind of I'm bringing the, the National Standards Body perspective uh, to this evening. So when I uh, think about young professionals, what I'm really thinking about is engagement and, and innovation. Um, and I think by engaging with that next generation of experts that are coming up and, and learning their skills and getting them involved in the standards development process, the, the whole system is going to benefit from a brand new fresh perspective and be able to succeed in ways that we, we haven't so far. So those are my initial thoughts, but happy to continue the discussion. Yeah, great. Thanks, Claire. And uh, I agree with you that really engagement uh, is very important, not only during the, uh, profession, uh, the Young Professional Program, but also afterwards. And uh, next one, I'll move to uh, Jacob. Yeah, thank you. Uh, as you said, my name is Jacob. Uh, I'm the YP from Denmark from last year. Uh, and I'm currently working for Grunfos as a product technical manager with a back ground in electronics and computer engineering. Um, I see this YP program as a chance to, as Claire said, getting better into better understanding of standards because all we do, uh, everything, like nearly everything at least, has a uh, standard that it's complying to. And my work with uh, electronic frequency converters uh, 
they have a lot of standards and I can already see how I'm starting to think a little bit different because I know a little bit better of, uh, of standards due to the YP program. So I'm grateful for that and I'm definitely sure other young professionals would be able to use that as well. Yeah, great. Thanks, uh, Jacob and uh, Luke. Um, yeah, that's also one, one of the, uh, the key takeaways for me from last year in Shanghai. That I really enjoy sharing the ideas and see how the young professionals in a different region tackle the same problem, let's say, from different standards. So that's, that's a very good point. And next one, I'll move to you, Mike. Yeah, hi, Bing, and uh, hi, everyone. Uh, Mike Wood's my name. I'm chair of Technical Committee 106. But more importantly, with this forum, I've been uh, one of the coaches for the YP program for a number of years. And uh, I think the first question you asked is, you know, what are the words that come to mind when you think of young professionals? Um, it's energy, being dynamic, being enthusiastic, wanting to learn, wanting to make a difference. And, you know, I see the new cohort each time and it's the same. It's, it's so much energy uh, in the group. And, you know, when, when the YPs move on to projects, they approach it very differently to when, you know, we would have started in standards. And that's where I think the value is. I mean, you're going to learn, you learn so much in the program, but as, and I always say this at the program, you know, when, we, when we're talking and, you know, giving speeches and, and, and coaching, we want you to be the leaders in 10 years. You know, you will be the leader in 10 years with a new cohort. Um, and I just see the, the energy and the, the dynamic nature of YPs and it'd be great to explore that today. I've, we've got some, lots of experience of YPs helping us mm -hmm. and you can probably see a 5G logo in the background. Well, I see a lot of YPs working on 5G projects and, you know, I would see them leading 6G. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's a lot to be, you know, there's so much potential. I see. And uh, just on that, Mike, uh, I think like say, everyone from the 2019 cohort would agree with me that uh, Mike actually did a fantastic work uh, in facilitating all those workshops. And I really enjoyed uh, working with Mike on a few initiatives as well. And uh, I feel like say, it's actually very important that not only young professionals like say, get involved, but also actually getting all those uh, valuable experience and license from uh, like senior leaders like yourself, Mike. And uh, that will support them further, like say, uh, more, I guess, more effectively getting more engaged in the IEC works. So absolutely, that's a, that's, that's a great, great way you to know, get You know, we uh, learn, um, you know, I was going to say, we learn probably more than you learn, because we're, we're, one of the things that I learned from the program is, you know, is how, you know, I, I get to see the update each year from what the IEC does, but, you know, it, it's our way of uh, engaging and learning what, what new skills are coming mm. through from the cohorts. Uh, so, yep. you know, I, I would really encourage, um, you know, the technical committee chair and others in the IEC um, yep. and the national committees to get involved. The program is going to be extended to five days. Um, it's going to be bigger and better next year. Um, so there's so much potential for everybody. Yep, uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, as you said, it's always a two-way channel for learning. Cool. All right. Uh, so that's uh, that's the first warm-up question I have. And the sec second question is actually from uh, our audience. This question I'll probably get uh, Jacob to, 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 to answer. And the question is, uh, what's your motivation? So why did you choose to apply and become uh, a young professional for Denmark? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, basically, I choose to apply because I could see at my work that there was a lot of people sitting with high knowledge of stuff. And I could see that we are some young people coming into it. And to get on their level, we need an understanding of the system. And I thought this uh, young professional workshop, both in Denmark from Danish standards and also from IEC, uh, actually was a good starting point to both start getting a better professional network within the fields of my education and profession, but also to learn something about the standards which we build our products on. Mm. I see. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. I think that's also, like say, the motivation of a lot of our VIPs that is trying to you know, expand our, our networks and also talk with other experts from the same area from different countries. But that's a, that's a good answer. Thanks for that. And the next question I have is actually, it's actually quite interesting. And it's actually about the other, I guess more, I would call it 
the, uh, the, the, uh, the reality side of, uh, of young professionals. So, so the question is, what new values can young professionals bring back to their workplace after the program? So this one, I'll ask, I guess, uh, all, all, all of our three panelists, and I'll start maybe with, uh, with uh, Mike this time first. So, the so if I can understand, the question is, what values do the YP bring back to the workplace? Exactly. Well, I mean, think, think of the networking that you do and the contacts you make and the ideas you bring back. I mean, you go in there and there's one or two from each country, maybe three, and suddenly you're connected with 50 or 60 or 70 other YPs that are in all different sectors. And, you know, with that networking you talk about, you've got so many connections, so many fresh ideas, and it's about how do you, you know, you bring back a whole different perspective. Um, and I've seen, you know, we've seen that where YPs take ideas back, that gets shared, shared at the national committees, then ideas spurn from that, and then you keep going. So I think um, one of the biggest values is the networking and the companies that invest in the YPs, they would get 10 times the value back at least. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that's probably one of the biggest. And we get to see, we get to see who the upcoming stars are of the future. So, you know, we're going to be looking for people that can work on all of the exciting new projects. So that's, you know, there's lots of opportunities for companies there. Yep. Yep. So, sounds good. Thanks for that, Mike. And I really, uh, like I said, like your point about the 10 times the return that company puts in on the young professionals. Yeah. So really like saying- well, what Can I ask you a question? You're asking us a question. So what did your company say? You know, you've gone back from the program and you've done an amazing yeah. thing in, you know, Standards Australia and being one of the YP leaders. But what have, you know, what, what have your colleagues and company noticed about about what you've done? Yep. I'm putting uh, that's, you a good... <laughs> that's right, hey, I'm feeling getting through off the bus. But anyway, mate, I'll, I'll try to answer this. So for me, I actually got quite lucky. Uh, I was working with, well, I'm still working with Acom. And last year, actually, my company paid for my time in Shanghai. And because Acom is a global company, I actually got the chance also working uh, in our Shanghai office for two days. So that was a really good experience. And what my employers, like they see the value um, in this program is really first, as you said, on the, net, on, the, on the networking side. And second is about building leadership, especially about building cross-cultural leadership. And as we know, that's a very important thing as all, uh, as whole world is getting more and more globalized. And lastly, it's also a good a good channel for the company to promote their, their brand. So that's the three values that my employers see, and really that's why they sponsor me. And I would say that's a really uh, that's 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 also really lucky for me. And, uh, and look at you now, you're hosting this session. So <laughs> that, that, that's right. Uh, and uh, I'll then move to uh, Claire on the same question. What values do you think uh, YPs can bring back to their workplace? Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that um, both valuing your answer and Mike's answer are, are great examples of, of what uh, the young professionals can bring back to their workplace. I think being able to network with the experts that are at the forefront of a lot of these new technologies that are coming through is such a valuable opportunity. And to do so in a really truly international environment, you expand your network from beyond your immediate country to that around the world. Um, and I think there's great examples that we've seen from Australia, but also from other countries of, of leaders that really come out of this program. And they take those values back to their employers. They know that information, they have those networks that they can then leverage from there. But also from a national standards body perspective, it's great that we have these people going out and, and also bringing that value back for the, the community of the country. Um, speaking from Australia, we do everything for the net benefit of the Australian community. So it really serves our interest to be promoting and working working with young professionals who can really drive that value. And I'm sure that's a shared view from a lot of the different national standards bodies around the world as well. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, and uh, lastly, I'll move to uh, Jacob. Is there anything else uh, you can think of, mate? No, uh, well, basically I'm agreeing with a lot of the things that's already been said. Uh, mostly actually, uh, Grundfos, I. I got some recognition in Grundfos for, for being chosen to be the YP. Uh, and But what we went to and what we brought back and how we did stuff, it actually hit the national body more. I got a huge network in Danish standards, which I didn't have before. And now I know who to contact. And I, we also have had this face-to-face -face interaction a bit more than just 
a workshop which kind of tied something together. And if we need anything, we I can just contact any of them. And I think that's where the value also brings. Of course, we have this external network. We have we have the WhatsApp group going along still, which I think is impressive. Um, and but we also have better internal network in the community of the country. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, look, I, I definitely agree with that. And I think that's also one of the benefits that why like say, a lot of people choose to get involved in the uh, standardization, either like say domestic or like say international. Surely if they see some problems they find from their, 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 their workplace, then really like say they can just call up their mates from standards committees and get answers straight away. That's really convenient. Right, and we have another question from the uh, audience, and uh, thanks for that, uh, Sylvia. So the question is, oh, that's a good one. How, how, how do you become a VIP? And uh, maybe I'll start with uh, this one with you first, Jacob, if you don't mind. Yeah, um, I don't mind. Uh, I'm here to talk. <laughs> um, the process is different from country to country. Um, Usually it's uh, national bodies that make a kind of uh, decision process where you apply to a workshop or something in the national body. But it can also be that the national body says, okay, uh, we're not gonna do a workshop, but we will review a couple of applications from different companies and they will uh, send it into you. Uh, or you would send it into them and then they will say okay we're going to pick this guy from that company and this girl from that other company for example so it really varies where you are in the world but my suggestion would be if it's of any interest to you uh, contact your national standardization body and uh, they should be able to have uh, yeah have some information on it that, that, that's a good, good point. I think, like say, uh, surely the the, uh, the national uh, the national committee is the uh, the first point of uh, contact for you. Uh, and uh, just on that note, I also uh, I'd like to invite uh, Claire also to uh, mention, I guess, to, to share her view on this one. Yeah, absolutely. I can certainly share from the Australian perspective how we choose our, our YPs. Um, I do, yeah, it, as Jacob said, it does vary from country to country and each country and national committee will have their own selection processes and, and different requirements. Um, for Australia, we do put out a call for an open call for um, applications because we want to kind of cast that net as widely as we can and engage as many young professionals as we can in the process. We are able to select two. Um, so it can be quite a competitive process um, and oftentimes we really, uh, I think we choose on the basis of the technical background, but also the really demonstrated interest and, and commitment to becoming involved in the standards development in the long term. In Australia, we do have a domestic uh, and national um, uh, young professionals program that runs in Australia called the Next Gen program and a lot of our past YPs have been sourced through that program. It's slightly larger in terms of its cohort size so it really is a great opportunity to get involved at the national level and then go on to represent Australia at the international level. So that's kind of a lot of the a lot of the YPs that we send have gone through that program. Yeah, that's great and uh, just on that I guess like for me I also went through that pathway as uh, Claire just mentioned back in the days the next gen program was called the Young Leaders Program. And uh, I, I still remember the lessons and also the values I gained from that program. And surely that uh, helps me to get ready for the IEC International Program. And uh, um, uh, 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 towards the end of this, uh, this session, we also touch upon the uh, national uh, program. So we'll come back to this point. And uh, the next point, the next question I have is actually pretty target, targeted to you, Mike. So, uh, so I hope you, you're ready for this. So I know that uh, you've been, like, say, the chair right, right. of the. Uh, <laughs> so I know that you've been the, uh, the chair for the five G uh, uh, standards committee, and uh, I see that's uh, like, say, one of the hot topics these days. Either you know, say, on the science side and also on the uh, on the rumor side. So from your experience, so how do you see the young professionals contribute to the work and to the to the technical tech, to the technical works you've been leading? Because like say, when we talk about young, profession, young professionals, people tend to think, you know, sometimes they are really inexperienced and sometimes they really don't know, like say, what to do during those committee meetings. So what's your opinion on this? 
So if I understand the question, it's how, how can they get more involved in the technical work in terms of some of the future technologies? Was that what you were after or on the 5G side? So that, 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 that's definitely the first part. And the second part is uh, also like say, what, what new values do you see them to bring to your, to your community? Well, let me give you an example of um, one thing that we actually did with uh, you know, a young professional that had, uh, had gone, gone through the program it was a couple of years into the, you know, a couple of years, uh, I guess, graduated. Um, we, 5G was rolled out two years earlier, as I was saying to the group last night. So one of the things we needed to do was to fast track the um, 5G um, testing standards so that we would be there ready for devices to launch. Um, now, the way we did that, which was, you know, unconventional from an IEC perspective, we thought, well, we can't develop a full standard. It's going to take too long. What if we harness all of our knowledge and we put it into a technical report that we can do within 12 months and let's get a young engineer to lead that because they will approach it completely differently, which they did. And it rocked the boat for quite a few of the more senior, uh, lead, you know, senior members because they, they weren't used to working in, a, in an agile way. So, you know, the younger engineer approached it in a really, um, you know, in a really dynamic way led, uh, you know, we had very tight deadlines, but he also harnessed all of the knowledge people had. Now he could do that applying his, I guess, enthusiasm, we talked about this before, the enthusiasm, the approach, it's a can-do attitude. And you know what, we delivered that within 12 months and all to his credit. And others watch that and they go, we didn't believe we could do that. And the stand with the technical report has now been adopted globally for the testing of all new 5G devices. So if you've got a new 5G phone, the chances are it's being tested to a standard that was led by one of the young engineers. Now, the part of your question is, you know, it might seem daunting as to what can they get involved in, but you guys are brought up with mobiles. We didn't start with mobiles. You guys, you, you guys just know the technology, right? Get involved in helping to lead some of the testing. Volunteer to help lead a subgroup uh, or be part of a testing cohort or you know, just get involved in some of the editorial writing so you can learn. Unless you jump in and take a leap you, you, and, and try things that are different, you know, volunteer a different way of working for, say, one of the subchapters. But more importantly, you know, um, make sure you're working with the chairs, offer your help, and look at what they can benefit from it because they're going to get a, a faster turnaround and you're going to ask questions that people probably haven't even thought of but are really going to impact. So I think it's about... Um, you know, it comes back to the networking, finding out who's there. That's why it's great to be on the program at a national level and the international level and, and reach out and make contacts because, uh, you know, we, and as we heard last night, the research on 6G started. You guys could be leading some of that. So if you're, if you're helping, um, you know, there's, and it's not just 5G, it's all the stuff that revolves around it, all the applications that are going to work in a smart city. So I think there's, I think there's plenty of opportunity. Just show enthusiasm and, um, you know, volunteering is a great way to get involved. So th that's just some ideas that I've seen work and make a big difference. Um, but uh, yeah, so that would be my suggestion. Yep. Uh, excellent. I think that's a great example you mentioned and uh, I, I can't agree more with uh, Mike. And based on my experience, I really see the young professionals, young professionals should be ready to put your hand up and trying to get involved. And I see, uh, Jacob, do you have anything to add on this one? Come again? Uh, do you have anything to add on this question? I, I see um, you unmuted yourself. Uh, yeah, uh, basically, I think it's important to highlight that Mike said that you need to jump out. You need to just start doing it because if you just sit in a committee after you've done the YP program and just say, okay, sometimes in a couple of meetings, you're not going to get that much out of it. It would be really exciting, for example, to work on new technologies, but you've got to take a leap. Uh, I haven't seen anyone failing or having any disasters to say, okay, I tried this, but I'm not up to it. Can you take this over? It's just being open with it and trying it. And you're going to get some professional development out of it, no matter the outcome. Can I add one more thing, Bing? It's, um, you know, sometimes we are tentative to try something. 
because we think, oh, what if that fails? I think you just made that point, Jacob. But, you know, um, what I've seen from YPs and young engineers is that's, that's the process of learning. Oh, we'll try that. It didn't work. You know, but, uh, you know, a couple of generations back, we're sort of reluctant in case, oh, we did not try that in case we've fully tested it. But, and that's the way standards used to be developed. You know, when I, when I first joined, they were, um, you know, it took ages because if you were doing a gold-plated standard. If we took that approach, we would be going to, we, you know, we would be going to Apple saying, we've just finished the 3G standards. And they'd go, oh, we've just turned that network off. <laughs> okay, well, that was good. But uh, so you've really got to take a leap and I really agree with it. Yeah. I see. And uh, uh, just on that one, I see like say, at the moment, there are a lot of uh, hot topics on technology. I think 5G, 6G being one. And also we see like say, there's a lot of standardization, standardization works on smart cities and on artificial intelligence. And probably like say, the traditional way of de developing standards is a bit slow for those you know, fast evolving technologies. And uh, that's, I guess that's where we have the next question. So what are the immediate and pressing challenges IEC needs YPs to solve? And uh, on this one, uh, I may get you to start with uh, Mike. The pressing, well, you just mentioned a couple of them being all of the things that will revolve around smart cities and, you know, the future connected world. Um, but, you know, you look at the biggest experiment we've gone through this year and people are really, uh, you know, we're all working from home. Um, and all of a sudden, if you planned that, you would still be, the, you know, working on the scope. But suddenly we were thrown into this world of, hey, we've got to work and live and, you know, we've all got to be on a connected, you know, like we're doing now. Um, I think the biggest, I think, you know, pick off something that's realistic that you're interested in um, and something that's going to challenge you. Um, but check in with your national committee, check in with the leads that, what are the hot topics in your area and what can you make a difference to? Because, you know, you, you want to come out of it um, where you've, you've genuinely helped society, you've helped the IEC and your local standards body, but you want to actually make a difference. You know, you want to go and say, I've done this, you know, and this has made a huge difference. Um, like that example I said before, when the young engineers were working on 5G standards, there's not many people that can say, you know, we worked on a standard the whole globe uses. And you know, you guys in the power sector, everyone in everyone that's connected in smart cities, education, healthcare, all of this, all of the verticals that work with that, there's so many fantastic applications. And we don't think of all of those. You're the guys that are actually um, coming up with some of these bright ideas. But even networking sessions like this, or even versions at home or in your own, you know, I know some people from the YP program, and they've gone back and started their own domestic program. And that's fantastic because they're taking the best of the YP program and going back home. And that you look at the benefit that will bring. So, you know, I think look ahead, pick something you're interested in or that challenges you and that others are really going to want to do. So, um, and then you really show um, courage and leadership that way. Yep, I see, I see. I definitely agree with that. I think like say really interest is the, uh, the best, I guess, starting point. Mm -hmm. And then from there, be patient and you know, like say always, try your networks around you, get help, get support, get new ideas, and then eventually trying to excel, I guess, in, in, in the field you pick. That's a great one. Um, and uh, Claire, I see you unmuted yourself. Do you have anything to add on this? Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to add, add a, a couple of thoughts here. I think that um, one of the really beneficial uh, things that YPs can really help the IEC with is by identifying what challenges they are facing. So it's really about hearing from the users of standards, the people that are having to kind of put them in their workplace that want to be working with them. If it's taking too long, then you need to tell us so that we can we can push those things. And if you have ideas for that, let's share them. Let's have that discussion and let's push for change. I think it's really important that from all aspects of the IEC, the national committees and the contributors, we all need to be kind of pushing to improve and, and pushing to do better. And I think that that's something that YPs, you know, have their finger on the pulse. What, what are consumers after if it's the speed that we need to get, you know, 6G standards written tomorrow, then let's push for that and, and really work on it. And I think that it's very much about making your voice heard, um, chase those national committees up, go and meet the experts, network the hell out of it and, and you know, really kind of make an impact. Um, 
yeah, I think that that's something that YPs could really do to, to benefit the organization and as national standards bodies and as the International um, Electrotechnical Commission, it's our responsibility to hear that, take it on board and make those institutional and process updates to really accommodate that speed of change. Yeah, yeah. I, excellent. And I think like say just from like say what you mentioned, that's great. And I think like say it's really important to for YPs to get in really proactive and you know like say show their passion in what they're doing. That's really important. I have one more thing to that, um, which is, you know, also have fun while you do it, because you know some of the standards, um, you know, can you know if they if they're really boring, people aren't going to be what they they're not going to be interested. But come along, have some fun, create the energy, and others will want to join, and that's uh, what I see the YPs doing. They're bringing this energy and fun to the whole the whole system. And that, that rubs off on everybody too. Uh, absolutely. And uh, uh, Jacob, I see you unmuted yourself. Do you have anything to add on this? Yeah, I, I was actually just going to agree with Mike on that because what we could see in that room uh, last year, and I also saw a question we might have missed, but uh, I'm going to touch about that now in my answer. It was an energy. People came from everywhere. The diversity was huge. Like, there were a lot of different people. I think we were one of the biggest YP groups. Uh, all, I think almost every continent, I don't think we had anyone from Antarctica, but besides that, we have people from Africa, from uh, South America, from America. It, it's like we were all bunched in together and the energy when we were doing group work or when we were presenting people with focus, you, you could hear it and then when I went over to a committee meeting afterwards you could feel that there might be a use for us YP because the energy wasn't quite on the same level uh, still very professional but the energy wasn't that high uh, so I can see how the energy and the diversity the program brings into this actually can benefit IEC and the standardization work from it. Yeah, can't, can't, can't agree more. I think like say really, that, that, that's the big thing, uh, really to young professionals really have responsibility to inject their energy into all those works in IEC and you know, like say push for positive changes. Um, I have another question from the audience and uh, this one is probably for you, Jacob. It's about uh, what, what, are, what are some of the opportunities for young professionals uh, to contribute after the program? Um, basically, I got more into standardization work. Before the program, I actually hadn't read the standard more than what I needed to do. But now I just commented on some energy uh, this uh, a committed draft on some energy of uh, motors, for example, which is highly relevant for my work, but it also gets you an opportunity to go out there and say, okay, at your company, we should do something like this. We Or at your national body saying, we should do something like this. Let's, uh, what I'm gonna take after this, I'm gonna have a talk with my national standard, uh, standard and uh, talk with them about actually doing maybe a little bit more than this uh, day of workshop or week or whatever, doing a little bit for the young professional. And I know we have something going on because we just got a LinkedIn group for the uh, young professional of the last couple of years going yesterday. Um, so making a little bit more out of this and actually be a driver for that because the only, I'm going to be, benefit from doing that and Danish standard is going to benefit from actually having an active young professional group because that will give opportunity down the line of if you have more knowledge you will get better position and get to work with more interesting stuff. That, that, that's definitely the answer. And uh, also, like say, I also add in uh, here as well, um, like say, I share the same experience with uh, Jacob that really after the uh, Young Professionals Program, I also see myself getting more exposed to IEC technical committee works 
and in my case, it's on a smart cities. So I was actually involved in both the uh, domestic and also the international uh, uh, works on, on, on smart cities standards. So I see like say the uh, young professional program is actually a great, I guess I call it a stepping stone for the young professionals to further get involved in all those good works done by others in, in, in the IEC world. And uh, um, next question. Right, so this is an interesting one. And I think that uh, I will ask this uh, to, all, to, to all of you. What is your favorite thing about being involved with developing standards and working with uh, IEC? I'll start with uh, uh, Mike, you first. Um, the favorite thing, I mean, the, yeah, my favorite reason for being involved. Um, well, I guess it's, it, well, for me, it's working with the latest technology and it's making a real difference. Uh, and, you know, I started with Standards Australia and then we got invited to be involved in some of the international work. Um, but if it's, it, it's about contributing and learning and meeting people, but it's more, you know, it, that, was, well, that was what interested me then. And then taking on some of the leadership roles and it, you, you get out of it what you put into it, I think. And that's what I see a lot of the YPs doing. And, and linking back to your question before, you know, the YP program is going to change. I mean, it's, I think it's in its 10th year or it's coming into its 10th year and uh, it's going to change to grow. But one of the big focus areas is what can you do in between the years and what can you do as a cohort and an alumni going forward? Because traditionally it's been the uh, elected leaders that run something, but then you've got about, you know, 60 or 70 other people that uh, need to be involved. And I know some of the people have taken initiatives um, but it's, uh, I think this is actually going to be a good opportunity this year to bring them together on forums like this. I know that some of the YPs in Australia are planning to do some of the uh, online forums, uh, hosting it and coming up with, you know, forums for YPs. Um, but, you know, it's, it's about, um, uh, you know, it's just that excitement and wanting to make a really positive contribution and travel. I love it. It's, you know, I actually renewed my passport and had it fast tracked in February and it hasn't gone off my table since, you know, we haven't, we, we won't be traveling anywhere for a while, but, you know, traveling was a big hobby of mine and uh, can't quite do as much of that this year as I would have liked. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm also missing traveling myself, and uh, even like something like background, I have Geneva behind. Yeah, but I'm actually in Sydney. I was planning to go to Geneva to Europe, but apparently nothing happened. But still, like, say fingers crossed for uh, for next year, I guess. Um, all right, so I'll move on to uh, you, Claire. And uh, the question is, uh, what's your favorite thing uh, while you're working with uh, IEC? Yeah, thank you. I think I my answer is quite similar to Mike's. I think I. I I think the thing that I get the most out of working with the IEC specifically is this international community that's being fostered um, in the standards development organization. I think that it's quite amazing that every year we can come together, sometimes virtually, sometimes in person and get to know the people that are working in the same fields as us around the world. I think it's quite incredible um, to build those connections and to see them really come to fruition. Um, it's great to see our, our past young professionals and the experts that contribute from Australia get to meet their counterparts and colleagues and, and bring that uh, information back. And it's great for, for me to meet with the other national committee uh, secretaries um, from around the world and find out how they do things, how we can improve things in Australia and how we can all learn from each other. So I think very much that international community is certainly my favourite thing about working with the IEC. Fantastic. And uh, last one, I'll move on to you, uh, Jacob. What's your favorite thing about working with IEC? Yeah, it, it's going to be a little bit as the same as the others, but this international net, network where you get to go out and uh, feel the energy, and also you get unrestricted access to some of the world's subject matter mm -hmm. experts on the, your profession, and but also you get a whole new site and you get to travel. Uh, I love traveling. Uh, last year, I think I was reached 40 flights or something in the year. In three and a half months, I had 27 flights and 11 different countries or something like that. Uh, this year, it hasn't been the same. Uh, we have still gone about our committee meetings, okay, but I like to go into I would actually like to participate next year in the IC uh, convention 
uh, hopefully physically if that's possible, because I just think that the IEC and the development of standards, it brings something together to actually be together and see who is that is you're talking with and working with or trying to develop a standard. Uh, I know this um, Zoom or Teams meeting, online, online meeting for that matter, goes a long way, uh, but it's just you get a whole other sense of what is going on and where the stuff is and what is actually meant and stuff like that. Uh, from being there in person. So I hope to participate next year. Uh, hopefully also to sneak a little bit sneak peek of the YP program, but depend on how long I'm going to be allowed to be there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, hope for the best. And I guess let's say just on this one, uh, for me, like say my favorite thing is actually on the uh, collaboration side, because like say we live in a world and uh, it's always conflicts in different corners and different parts of the world. But really, like say, I see on IEC, it's more like a family. It's a global community and uh, it's, it's made up of people from all different countries, different cultures. But still, you see people are working towards one same goal. And, that's the, and that goal actually serves, serves for the, uh, the net benefit of the whole human society. And that's why I really enjoy the whole collaboration process with all the colleagues from um, different countries, different parts of the world. Right, so next question um, I have. Oh, Clara, do you have anything to add on this? Before I'm I was on? actually going to uh, pose a question back to the three of you, if that's okay. Sure. I, I kind of want to know from the national standards body's perspective, what is kind of your thinking in terms of how can we support young professionals and, and experts in the international community to, to do their jobs better or to contribute better? All right, uh, I, I may take, take this one first because we actually think like that's actually the next question on my list. I'm gonna ask that. And I was thinking to ask you first, Claire, but you did it first. All right, fair enough. I'll take this question. Um, for this one, I think like say on like say on one on, on one side on one side of the equation, we see the all the young professionals who are normally really passionate about what they're doing and trying to get involved. And on the other side, also see the the, the national committees who who I guess in most cases seriously need the young professionals and new energies to be injected into the work they're doing and also to represent the country on the global platform. And that's why I think it's really important that for the young, uh, for, the, for the national committees to actually to help the young professionals to get ready for, for all those upcoming discussions because it's actually a not easy process. Um, on one hand, you have to deal with all those technical uh, issues and on the other hand, it's, all, it's, it's always about, uh, called, I call it CQ, cultural, cultural intelligence. And that is all about, let's say, how to understand different culture, understand different perspective, and how to collectively collect more effectively with others. So it's more like a cross-cultural cross leadership thing. And that's why I think uh, one, one, one good thing I, I, I see happening in uh, Australia and uh, a lot of, like say, the good people, like including yourself, uh, Claire, doing you know, in, in Australia, helping young professionals is the, uh, the National Young Professional Program. And I think like, so that's uh, one of the most important first step of say for the young professionals to get ready and know what's coming on the IEC level. And through those programs, for me, I really enjoyed networking with my peers as always, and also to learn about all the soft skills and about, you know, like say, those uh, technical skills, skills about developing standard. So that's one. That's 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 definitely one thing I feel really valuable that, that all the national committees could do for the young professionals to get them ready. All right. So maybe I'll I'll add to that then. I look, thoroughly, um, completely agree with the national committee programs, and I know we're very fortunate in Australia that the um, Next Gen program. And the young leaders program is really, um, you know, has really encouraged um, the young engineers and the young people in Australia to be part of it. Uh, and I would encourage all countries to try and, you know, develop something similar because you you do see the difference between, um, you know, YPs that come from a pro, you know, come from a country where there's a really involved program because they do have some follow up. Um, so at a global level, I, I definitely recommend that. Um, but if we're if you're looking at extending beyond, like I think it was a question before about how do you support YPs after the program, um, what I see domestically is you guys getting involved in some of the national committees that we have uh, and meeting some of the leadership teams. 
But there's probably nothing to stop us looking at, well, what if we hosted an Asia Pacific forum? What if we did something in Australia or if, you know, in the Northern America, you know, there's, there's potential for the regions to collaborate more um, and hold things in between the, you know, the, the, the annual event, whether they're virtually, whether they're virtual or whether they're face to face, um, you can build on that. And it's, um, it's building that sense of community. So I think it's continuing that, but that's really where I think, you know, the national programs can make a big difference by helping facilitate that. Because often you've been away, you've gone to a program, you come back and you're almost overloaded with information. How do I, how do I put something into practice? And that's where I think the national committees, um, Claire, I think you asked the question, can really help. And, you know, we've seen like, in, you know, we keep talking about the Australian model, but there are other models as well. Uh, like in Germany, they've got a fantastic model. In the UK, they've got a great model and they're really involved. So that really helps. Um, but more, more on that collaboration side and, and giving the opportunities too, that would be um, my suggestion. Excellent, thank you so much for that, both of you. And, and Jacob, did you have anything to add to that as well? I, I actually don't think I have anything to add. Uh, I know that building that, uh, as Mike says, building the community afterwards will definitely help. We tried to get, uh, we actually had a planned meeting for European YPs in Barcelona uh, in March. That got cancelled two weeks before due to Corona, uh, unfortunately. Um, but an aftercare, and I'm happy to hear that most country has this, but aftercare from uh, standardization bodies uh, beyond just introducing people to standardization committees uh, is a good thing. And I see Danish standards actually starting to do that as well. So uh, I think we're moving in the right direction with creating this community after the program. You, you definitely just on that one, I'll just add, I, I know that uh, there was something planned for the uh, European uh, young, young professionals after Shanghai to meet up. And I think uh, 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 we also have a uh, show from uh, China who was also organizing a program for the uh, East Asia uh, young professionals to meet afterwards. But unfortunately with uh, COVID, uh, everything is now just on the paper, but definitely next year we hope to, you know, like say kick off all of those uh, good initiatives to get uh, together all the uh, regional young, young professionals together on this. And, yeah, uh, exactly. Can I just quickly uh, add Baoying sure. before we move on? Um, I just wanted to add that, yeah, thank you so much for that feedback. And I think that that's something we can certainly kind of get going. And hopefully if there's any other uh, national committees in the Asia Pacific region listening, then we can kind of get together and start um, developing some of those regional forums. Um, and I also just wanted to quickly mention that from the Australian perspective, as I mentioned before, we're only able to select two YPs this end each year, which means that we kind of have a smaller group. But that's not to say that the YP program is the only pathway into contributing to the IEC as well. Um, certainly through our next gen program, that's a bigger group. But, you know, we see young and emerging experts throughout all of our technical committees in all areas. So don't let the fact that if you haven't made it onto the YP program be a deterrent from getting involved. I think that there's still plenty of pathways to be involved. Hey, Bing, one more suggestion. Have you guys sure. ever thought of, um, uh, you know, you, you're talking, we're, we're talking about an expanded program. You're talking about getting YPs in and attracting people into standards. Um, you know, maybe a challenge, and maybe this has been done and I just haven't seen it, but maybe a challenge is, um, you know, looking at giving some TED Talks uh, on the program and getting people more motivated uh, and the value of standards um, and really lifting the, um, you know, the, um, I guess, the, the knowledge of what standards bring. Um, I think, uh, you know, people would be pretty switched on to standards when it comes to the medical sector at the moment and, and uh, you know, and the importance that, the, you know, those sort of standards play. But uh, I think that would be a great thing for YPs to be involved in. Yeah, that, 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 that's an excellent one. And uh, look, I think uh, the TED Talk definitely seems to me is a great idea and probably uh, a personal challenge for next year, I guess. Yeah, but uh, look, uh, I, I agree with you, Matt, that um, really, like I said, we need, we also, like I said, not only need to think about, like, say, young professionals, but also we need to think about, like, the general public and how we can try to, I guess, raise the, raise the awareness of standards and, you know, like, say, get everyone involved in this process. Um, and uh, I'll move on. We have still have two more questions. I'm really cautious about time. We only have 10 minutes left. So we got this question and um, 
uh, probably I'll ask you, Jacob, so don't be too surprised, is uh, what is the most precious contribution that you had done after becoming a VP? Oh, that's, uh, that's a very good question. Um, I, I actually think it's, uh, I had a 10 minute talk on what I did uh, as a YP uh, in a couple of weeks ago at that Danish Standards Workshop. Um, and I think that's the most precious thing I've done in standards because that was uh, given to 20 some other young professionals uh, and inspiring them to what they could actually start doing and how they could enter the field if electrotechnical committee was uh, something for them or different kind of standards. Uh, I think that would be the most precious thing I've done. Uh, I think that's a, that, that's, that's a great example. And uh, look, I, I definitely like say, think that's very important for the young professionals who are elected leaders for the country to also share the experience and uh, inspire other young professionals from the country to participate. I think uh, that, that that's a very important thing. So well done. And uh, 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 Mike, I see you. I mean, for yourself, you have anything to add on this one? Um, no, I th look, I think it's going to, you know, you, we see young YPs coming back into committees a couple of years after they've been through the program. And whether it's, uh, you know, giving a talk about what the program delivered, whether it's your first contribution. And I think, Jacob, you talked about reviewing standards since and taking more interest in doing that. I mean, that's a huge contribution because, you know, you're coming at it from a different perspective. Um, you know, others, and I know, um, you know, J Jenny and a couple of the others in Australia are looking at starting up a, a webinar series for YPs that would be led by YPs to encourage young engineers and young people to be involved. So everyone's doing something slightly different. And, uh, and, and that country, and I think it was Germany that uh, Anna um, uh, looked at, uh, you know, the day, in, developing the day in the life of a standard or developing a standard in a day, or it was a program about how, you know, teaching people that, uh, that method. Um, so, you know, it, 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 I think if you're involved after, it doesn't necessarily matter where you start, but that you're actually taking an interest and in getting more outside your comfort zone and getting involved in doing something. So it's, uh, you know, all of those steps, they're, uh, they're steps to being, uh, more, more involved in the IEC and taking those leadership roles. Absolutely. And uh, 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 I'll, I'll keep moving on, I guess, like I so said, we have one last topic to, to discuss tonight. And uh, that's actually something I'm really passionate about. And that is about diversity. So one of the, question, one of the questions that we have is uh, on the global level, how, 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 how can young professionals as well as uh, national committees uh, embrace and support diversity and also encourage participation from underrepresented regions. Uh, I'll get a clear answer to this question first. Thank you very much. Um, I think that one of the, the biggest challenges that we have as an international organization is making sure that all the voices that we have around the world are heard and, and there's availability and accessibility to contribute from all regions, regardless of kind of, if you're a developing country, if you're a developed country, but also that all those other aspects of diversity as well in terms of you know gender, disability, age, any of those kind of factors. I think that the stronger, a standard has become stronger through that robust debate and by having a diversity of views there for that discussion and making sure that we're not kind of working in a vacuum and, and working in isolation, but having all those views there. And I think in terms of what YPs can do, it's really put that expectation onto the international organizations and onto your national committees to, to make that work and to put in that investment. Um, I know Australia, we certainly do a lot of work with different developing countries in our region. Um, we have recently started an IEC mentoring program with Cambodia that we're very excited to work on and hopefully we'll be able to work with them on some kind of young, young person engagement uh, and get their maybe a national program at their end started, who knows. Um, but I think there's so many opportunities with different countries around the world to kind of collaborate there. And I think for certainly for the YPs, it's about spreading that message, um, communicating those benefits about what you get out of it and kind of, yeah, spreading the word and being ambassadors for the program. That, that, that definitely, I think that, that that's a great answer. And like, so really like, I think 
from my perspective, let's say to improve diversity, it means not only just IEC central office, but also all the national committees to share resources and trying to help other members to uh, pick up and uh, try to, to try and get involved. Uh, and I'll also, I'll, I'll, I'll move on to uh, Mike and uh, what do you think about this question, especially, you know, like say all those technologies and really we don't, end of the day, we don't want to create this uh, technology inequality between different countries. So what do you think about uh, this, this, this issue on, on diversity? Look, it's a really good point that you raise and a really, um, you know, I guess if you think about the IEC, it's the International Electrotechnical Commission and we work on international standards and that includes everybody and i think the the, the you know the mission or the, the vision for the iec is iec everywhere for a safer world so um going back to the point i raised earlier you know if we look at the regional um, concept and you know the national committees to take a real lead and reach you know where the where the developed countries like claire you mentioned in australia are partnering with some of the uh, developing countries and they're really setting an example because you know it may be that in a developing country like Cambodia that the YPs there they're very very talented they just haven't got the mechanism to connect but partnering or mentor uh, or you know a buddying system like that would really help and then if that's supported by at the international level through the uh, through the IEC and I know we've um, you know we have a new coordinator now and we're going into a bigger program then I think all of that can work together. So, you know, it's, uh, I would really favor the, um, you know, the regional um, aspect of linking in with your, your neighbors and your countries that are, uh, you know, developing countries and reaching out on that re respect. And even, you know, the diversity aspects within your own country, like Claire was saying, I mean, they've got, to, you know, having, having it as part of what you do in your own backyard makes a real difference. And it's not just a written policy, it's actually doing it. Um, and so they would be the things that, uh, because I come back to the original point, it's the International Electrotechnical mm -hmm. Commission, and that's everybody. Um, that would be my, um, my um, contribution to that one. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, lastly, I'll move to you, Jacob. What do you think about uh, diversity? Um... I think that it would be really great to not only work in your own national body, but maybe try and establish uh, a companionship between uh, sister countries, for example. I know it would be easy for me to say Sweden and Norway since we are almost the same. <laughs> like, um, at least location-wise, but then again, you have maybe also that idea Claire brought, brought forward uh, about uh, doing a Cambodia, for example, or having the body system Mike uh, talked about and getting the inspiration of how stuff is done differently in other places. And that will also affect how you do stuff yourself when you have the time to get inspired by it. So I think that would be a really great idea to start um, pushing forward. And I also think that's something I see the YP program maybe could try and do uh, after we leave uh, like, or if, as part of the program. I shouldn't push anything on the agenda, but as part of the program, maybe set this body system up because I'm not talking to uh, regularly at least talking to people from Africa, but they will definitely have a different point of view and standardization going than I have. So that would also benefit me, me for example. That, that, that's a very interesting point. And I can stress on that, like say, on this, uh, on this uh, big topic about diversity, it's actually like, so we should realize that that's not, not only just for the uh, IEC central office and also national committees to, uh, to, to solve. As young professionals, we also have our responsibility in improving diversity for the IEC community. And on that mark, I also mentioned this project, which I've been working with um, uh, uh, some 2019 YPs, like uh, sure, like uh, uh, Nico from Finland, Nikitisen from uh, South, South Africa and Victoria as well, and also get support from uh, the central office, as well as people from other national committee uh, committees like uh, Australia, Claire, 
beer and also South Africa. And what we're trying to do is actually to help the, the new IEC African members to establish their own uh, national young professional program and using that as a platform to help them cultivate the, 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 the next generation of leaders and eventually to help those people to participate in the uh, international discussions. That's a very small step, step, step but surely I see that a lot of uh, like-minded YPs like yourself, Jacob, are thinking about different ideas and doing different things to improve this. So surely I think there are a lot of things that we could do in this space and uh, we can, a lot of things that we can improve. Um, we are just right on the mark, so it's 10 p.m. and actually I just ran out of my questions. So really, like I say, it's a great, it's a fantastic, fantastic discussion, and, and, and I thoroughly enjoy this whole session. I just didn't realize how time flies so fast in the past hour. And uh, to sum to, to sum up uh, this today's discussion, I think like I say, uh, all of all of our, our panelists actually shared a lot of insights about young professionals and, and how the young professionals can get actively actively involved with the support from their inquiries and also with the support from the, uh, the national committees. Some keywords I learned today is about uh, be proactive and you know show your energy and, or, uh, and get ready and uh, let people know that you are really into something and you're really ready to contribute. And another thing I take is really as MacSide International, always, always remember it is an international program. That's why it's important for upcoming young professionals to have uh, a global vision and um, uh, and also trying to exercise and uh, uh, to try to exercise uh, a global leadership. So that's that's that, that's it for me. And uh, Luke, uh, again, uh, I really want to say a big thank you to uh, Mike, Claire, and Jacob for joining me today. And also, I want to say thank you to all those who are watching on Facebook. And uh, please be be aware that th that this session will be available on the Facebook and YouTube page for those who want to watch later. And uh, lastly, I also want to say thank you to uh, uh, Sylvia, uh, who's been always in the background uh, feeding us questions, and also to others like Aristia, who make uh, this, uh, uh, that's this very, very valuable networking session uh, of, uh, uh, possible to, to all of us. So uh, that's it, I guess, and uh, I'll close the meeting now. But look, guys, uh, it's a great to catch up with, uh, with, you, with, with you all, and uh, stay safe. I'll see you until next time. Take care. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I'll stop.